Okay, thank you very much. Welcome to the PIDE webinar, which we have organized in uh, um, coordination with Reenergia and uh, with um, uh, the Institute of uh, uh, Trade Facilitation. Um, <clears throat> this is, as everybody knows, trade is a very important concept and trade is probably the most human concept of all. Trade is where humanity begins and trade is where the economy begins. Everything is trade and we have to um, really be focused on what trade, um, what the trade regime is. If you want development, we want trade. So with that, let me thank Amir Durrani for arranging this seminar. Amir Durrani and Reenergia, his company, an important company for developing energy in Pakistan. And let me also thank the International Trade Center for arranging this webinar with us. As you're all aware, PIDE is a platform for trying to get things done in Pakistan. So we are very happy to work together with people and very happy to work together with important um, facilitators like Amir Durrani, thinkers and facilitators. So um, yes, we want to discuss trade facilitation because it's the most important thing that any economy is built on. If we have trade and if we have trade facilitation, unfortunately, Pakistan has always lagged on trade, we have not developed our exports, our trade sector, and this is uh, where we are going to begin today. So let me, with that, let me hand over to Amir Durrani, the architect of this sure. webinar today. So Amir, over to you. Thank you very much, Dorsav, and I must thank you that despite your Ill Ill illness, you still uh, opened the seminar. I really thank you for that. Um, I'm going to just basically run quickly everybody through the order. Uh, the first is basically, as soon as I introduce uh, Dr. Saeed from Geneva, the director at ITC is going to introduce uh, the overall project as part of which this webinar is being organized. Uh, after that, we'll have uh, some remarks from the Ministry of Commerce. Wes will talk a little bit about, to basically initiate the audience about what TFA is and what are the uh, obligations on the TFA. Uh, after that, or our ex-ambassador WTO, uh, Tokyo Shasa, will uh, make a statement. And after that, I will then present sort of the four or five issues which we are going to table for today. Uh, most of you have received these issues, especially those around the table. Um, I will also appreciate um, if I can get some uh, kind of uh, affirmation as to who all from the table are here. I just wanted to quickly say I see Tariq Rangunwal, I see Irtak Azedi, I see Jawad. I see Oves, I see, uh, well, say Jawed Ali has joined. Um, do we have Jawed Mansoor? Yes, we do have Jawed Mansoor. Do we have Tasneem Nurani Saab? I don't see him. Uh, but I also think uh, Ma'am Rubina has joined us. So I think we have plenty of people uh, from around the table that can actually, I will be referring to and calling upon as we proceed. Uh, so I think uh, without further ado, let me just hand over the floor to Muhammad Saeed. Uh, Mahmoud Sisa, could you a small introduction of what you and ITC do, and then with that, maybe a little bit about the project under which we're doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amit. Uh, thank you. Greetings from Geneva. I'm sure we are also now in the afternoon times. So good afternoon. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, before introducing ITC, let me say that uh, I just is very pleased to partner with uh, PIDE and uh, thanks to Dr. Nadeem al -Haq, uh, for taking out time and agreeing to um, partner this and re Energia and the spirit behind re Energia, the energy behind re Energia, Ahmed Durrani. <laughs> we have worked a lot on these issues, uh, so I just is very pleased to partner with. And I specifically want to mention uh, the proactive, I would say, <coughs> leadership role of the Ministry of Commerce in this. So I, my personal thanks also go to the Ministry of Commerce. Unfortunately, today the Secretary of the GS is not there, but we have the representation and we are very uh, thankful that they have already started the um, <clears throat> sporting the NTFC, realizing the importance of the NTFC for any trade in Pakistan. Uh, let me briefly introduce in a few ten sentences for those of you who are not familiar with the ITC. Uh, ITC is the Joint Technical Aid Assistant Agency of the WTO and UN. So 50% of my budget comes from the WTO, which is trade, and 50% from the UN, which is the development. So this is the trade and development, or the trade development nexus, uh, which we do. 
and the only UN agency which has the dedicated mandate to work with the private sector and within the private sector also, especially uh, with the SMEs uh, for inter their internationalization and improving their uh, competitiveness. Coming to this uh, project briefly, uh, this remit is a, first of all, this is a bigger project which focuses on the revenue mobilization, investment, and the trade. Uh, about 39 million pounds project, but this is all grant money from DFID. So we are thankful to the uh, DFID as well as the UK government for supporting Pakistan to develop their uh, economy, which includes investment as well as revenue. Um, uh, this remit trade component, which uh, ITC has been <coughs> assigned to and lead to deliver by the DFID, uh, uh, we'll be having this four-year project. We are currently in the inception phase. Uh, this is a five million pound uh, project, uh, primarily focusing on the three areas. Uh, the first area is that we will be complementing the efforts of the Ministry of Commerce to develop their export strategies. And here we will not only be helping them uh, to develop their own STPF, which they are already doing, but also going further a bit that select about 10 sectors and for those sectors, not only the policy, but also the action plan and the functional strategies we will be developing. And uh, we are also in conversation that if we can bring up some monitoring mechanism, which can also track what we announced or what we agreed to do. A complementing part is uh, the export uh, trade policy part. And when I say trade policy, it is improving the market access and the supply chain to the destination market, again, in the selected sectors, where we will be trying to identify what the regulatory and the procedural barriers are and how those could, could be addressed, and then helping to address those. And the bigger component within this is uh, about the trade facilitation. And in trade facilitation, again, we will be selecting certain TF reforms, uh, which will be <clears throat> helping both Ministry of Commerce as well as uh, FPR. The cross-cutting theme in all these three components, which are separately but uh, are related and interdependent, is that it would be driven from the business perspective. So whatever we would be doing, we will be doing in consultation with the private sector. And when I say private sector, at least our effort would be to make it as inclusive as possible and as comprehensive as possible. They're starting from the identification or diagnosis of the problem, then looking for the solution and then working on this uh, uh, solutions. So for us, the private sector, and when I say the private sector, whether this is SMEs, whether it is the bigger companies, that would be where we will be uh, reaching out to them, involving them so that we can address whatever their aspiration and the way they want us to work on that. I'm very happy. Uh, we are still in the inception phase, but this is our first activity which we are doing, so to say, in a public domain that we have opened it and whatever we are discussing. Uh, on the trade facilitation committees. I personally has a long association with Pakistan's National Trade Facilitation Committee. And at the Geneva, we jointly work on this issue, especially with the UNCTAD and the UNECE. You might have seen many publications which we did together. And we are also maintaining a repository which can give you the information about 130 countries that what are their TORs for their committee, who are the members, what are their meeting mechanism, the frequency, who is the chair, role of the private sector, the, all those kind of information which is uh, available. Uh, my personally working, I have worked with more than 50 countries uh, on the trade facilitation reform, including the national trade facilitation committees. Uh, I can, looking at the people sitting on the table as uh, the expression is being used by other, as well as the other participants, with certainty, I can say that the expertise available in Pakistan is probably not even available collectively in all those 50 countries where I have worked. So I'm very pleased to see these people who knows the ins and outs that how this National Trade Facilitation Committee can help 
to advance the Pakistan's trade and subsequently the trade, economic and the development agenda. Uh, we will be, uh, of course, driven by the project life till June 2024. Uh, we will be a platform where we can assist, we can facilitate, we can convene these kind of things and then learning from you, hearing from you, incorporate that business perspective into the policy making and the policy implementation also uh, and uh, regularly monitoring and providing the feedback to both our two big counterparts, uh, public agencies, Ministry of Commerce and the FPR. I would stop here with this request that uh, the kind of enthusiasm uh, you have shown to join this event, uh, we would expect and we would be reaching out to you frequently in next four years to learn from you that how we can further refine what we are going to do. Thank you very much. Over to you, Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sayed Saab. Okay, so Dr. Saab has, uh, Marshall, introduced the project very well. And once again, I thank all of those around the table to be here. I can see now that everybody has pretty much joined, barring Tariq Huda. Um, I'm going to hand over the floor now to Aves uh, to give a very quick Aves. You know, uh, Saeed's the boss, so I couldn't in intrude, but I will intrude if you overshoot the time. So you have exactly four minutes to present uh, in three slides uh, the, the TFA obligations, etc., just so that the audience is all on the same page. Over to you, Aves, and then I'll uh, ask uh, Toki Shapsa to join. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me just uh, briefly introduce what the TFA is. Uh, I'm sorry if the presentation is not really opening up on my side, but I don't think that will be very important. I'll just narrate it uh, just by the time it opens up. Well, the, all right. Uh, thank you for that. Trade facilitation agreement. Uh, first of all, uh, it was basically it came into um, effect in 2017. Uh, like many other initiatives of the World Trade Organization, this is basically aimed at easing and supporting the flow of trade internationally and also bringing down the risks that are attached to cost of doing business and to the flow of business internationally. Um, Pakistan uh, ratified this uh, agreement in 2015 and it came into effect in 2017 once WTO had the agreement of uh, at least uh, two thirds of its members. The TFA itself basically is a document that is divided into three different sections. The first section that is about publications and availability of information uh, talks about all those requirements which all the acceding member states have to uh, fulfill. Now these uh, requirements can be further categorized into three A, B and C categories. A categories are those which, um, kindly move on to the next slide please. Uh, Category A commitments are the commitments which uh, developing countries and least developed countries uh, commit to have fulfilled by the time they accede to this uh, agreement. Uh, developing countries like Pakistan, once they sign and they accede to the agreement, they commit that all the category A commitments uh, are already fulfilled. And LDCs uh, are given one additional year in this timeline. Category B commitments are those which are on the uh, wish of filling those requirements. Category C, uh, which I later on de develop on that, these are the, the uh, toughest, uh, toughest in the sense they, they do require a lot of technical assistance, they do require a lot of financial commitment from every country, and the international uh, degree of compliance with Category C is still very low. However, Pakistan gladly is uh, more than the international average of compliance with Category C. This is the um, area where LDCs and developing countries also, uh, they just like category B, they give a timeline in the future times, times where they want to commit and they want to fulfill these categories, but they also require technical assistance for. I hope I've made the point clear. Uh, category B is where we want more time, but category C in, with more time, we also want technical assistance. So this is how category A, B and C um, are defined in brief. If we could kindly move on to the next uh, slide, please. I have made, an, uh, I made a hyperlink over here. If you could kindly click on that. Uh, 
but instead of going on the entire uh, list i'll just ask you to move on to the next slide so that i could give you a brief of uh, what the uh, salient features of these commitments are this slide basically tells you how uh, pakistan stands uh, vis a vis all the other nations which have acceded to this uh, agreement pakistan's um, commitment uh, ratio of a percentage of commitment is well above the international average especially in category c and as of august end pakistan stands at 70.2% compliance ratio uh, vis a vis other nations as far as tfa commitments are concerned next slide please well this is how uh, pakistan has uh, complied with category a commitments uh these are only the salient salient features uh if any one of you wants to ask me any anything about these uh articles and what they mean what they uh, how they apply to pakistan you can you know uh, when we come out of the question and answer session i'll be available to answer about that um category a let me just briefly redefine are those commitments which at the time of a session every country uh promises to have complied with already uh next slide please category b commitments which uh every acceding state uh, gives timeline or a transition period for um but does not require any technical assistance these are the requirements which pakistan in category b which has which have already been implied uh, implemented in pakistan okay was uh, you have a minute all right sir uh, that's the last slide uh, category c um, over here i have given the most important um, commitments in category c which pakistan have has already complied with and i'll like to mention that these are the areas where other countries developing and also ldcs are finding it difficult to comply with uh, for example single window which pakistan is uh, in the process of complying and we have basically sought two more years in uh, having it uh, implemented is one area where many other countries have uh, especially developing countries have lagged behind and these are the commitments which have already been uh, implemented in pakistan in category c very good alright thanks a lot i uh, i think that let's move on to uh, basically uh, thank you very much for that and i think that uh, gives us a background now uh, maybe one of the things which maybe dokir sahab you could uh, uh, introduce uh, in the next couple of minutes is how the resuscitation of the national trade resuscitation body in pakistan is linked to the tfa um but before that i must actually recognize two people that i think have joined who have been Uh, very supportive in during the years that I was doing. I have I want to recognize Abdullah Yusuf Saab, former chairman of PR, and I also want to recognize Dr. Manzoor Ahmed. I think without whom I may not have never understood how Geneva functions. So uh, with that, I hand the floor over to Dr. Issa. Dr. Issa, floor is yours for three minutes. Thank you, Durani Saab, and um, uh, let me thank Pied and yourself for inviting me to this very. Uh, august gathering of experts and my uh, best wishes and uh, respectful regards to ambassador manzoor who i envy because i see him sitting on the beach and uh, still thinking about trade facilitation so assalam alaikum uh, ambassador manzoor saab and especially uh, our uh, one time mentor in uh, lahore latimul haq saab we learned a lot about Uh, from him about public sector reform so thank you sir and assalam alaikum uh, dear colleagues uh, i'm uh, i was very fortunate and uh, honored that i was representing pakistan at wto when we ratified the tfa the trade facilitation agreement this was 2015 uh, trade facilitation agreement is or trade facilitation as a concept is essentially about simplification and standardization of custom formalities administrative procedures and this is in essence about reduction of the border transaction costs other than tariff reductions and uh, when i look at it to me it is essentially public sector reform so uh, wto research has very uh, well documented that trade facilitation agreement implementation can reduce the global cost of trade by average of 14.3%. This is huge. This is more than elimination of all tariff globally. So this is the power of trade facilitation. The WTO documents that 2.7% growth 
in global exports can be achieved by implementation of TFA. And global GDP can grow by 0.5% annually if we try to implement the TFA agreement in letter and spirit. So uh, I'll just share some thoughts that uh, how, how TF is viewed in Pakistan. You see, my experience and thought is that when it is about public sector reform, it is about change management. And you know, our public sector is quite wary of change management or change itself. So you have resistance. I'll give, share one thoughts. In Bali, we had ratified the trade facilitation agreement. In 2015, when the summary was moved for ratification, many stakeholders and many important stakeholders were of the views that we should not ratify. Similarly, when uh, A, B, C category commitments were being uh, uh, tabled or filed or submitted to the global uh, body, the WTO, uh, we were very conservative. Whereas the UNCTAD study showed that we were 90% compliant of all TFA uh, provisions. So we were among the high flyers in WTO as far as uh, trade facilitation was concerned, but still there were a mindset in Islamabad which wanted uh, to be conservative. So this brings it back to the very fact that TFA is about the ownership at the senior level and at the political level. We are fortunate that right now we have uh, huge ownership in the ministry at both political and the bureaucratic level. So uh, when we ratified, the formal stakeholders opposed, but it was a political decision that we'll ratify. Even the ABC commitments were revised on political intervention. Recently, uh, we have had a change of uh, bureaucratic leadership in the ministry, and it's very heartening that the new secretary, one of the first things he did in the first few days of his uh, tenure was to hold the meeting of the National Trade Facilitation Committee, which is the main theme of today's discussion, which I think is the nerve center if one wants to deal with uh, TF in, in, in real spirit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, TFA and ease of doing business are intricately linked. You see, what TFA is about, it is about facilitatory mindset. It is about public sector change management, I said. It is about private-public dialogue, and it is about private-public partnership. And the nerve center for this is the Trade Facilitation Committee, which has recently been uh, uh, reinvigorated uh, in the leadership of the present secretary, which, which is very heartening and very encouraging. Uh, you see, you hear a lot about global value change in Pakistan, and it's an inspired ambition that we should be linked to global value chains. Take my word, if we don't have TF, we'll have no global value chains. No country is even going to, or company engaged in global value chains is going to look at us if our performance on TF is not up to the desired standard. You see, the hallmark of global value chain is the goods cross the borders many times. So if there are inefficiencies, if there is red tape, no big company is going to look at that destination as a global value chain destination if its TF is not up to the mark. Uh, I remember a quote from uh, DDWTO Ambassador Azavedo when he came to Pakistan. He said, you have very good infrastructure, but TF is the software for that infrastructure. So uh, my thought on this is that trade facilitation agreement of WTO, although it is 80% custom centric, but it's not about sir. customs. Okay, sir. It is not about customs only. It is a multi-agency. It is a multi-stakeholder, multi-ministry uh, uh, endeavor. And for that, my thought is that this trade facilitation committee, which is a binding commitment under Article 24, should be led and owned by the ministry as it is presently being done. Uh, a lot of discussion Today is going to be factored around the secretariat. My experience of the three years on this is that the right secretariat for this is the wing of the ministry, which is the WTO wing, which may, in my suggestion, should be renamed WTO and TF uh, wing, so that there is an ownership. My experience of 
donor funded small units and cells is that they do very well as them they're along uh, around but once they go they breed a lot of uh, sort of uh, 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 dependency and then we are back to square one one last parting right. thought is that uh, Maybe, maybe we can have this discussion when I open up the table because I think you've given an introduction. So if you allow me, we have a lot of topics to cover. So maybe you can step in when we talk about the committee and the secretariat and where we're going to house it. Is that okay, sir? Fine, sir. And just one last thought. TF is not about inputs or uh, outputs. It is about outcomes. So I would encourage participants to discuss this that how can we have real tangible outcomes uh, on the trade visitation agreement. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Shah Saab. Uh, basically, I am going to change the format a bit because we've taken a little longer in introduction. And I really want that the table uh, should talk. And so what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to, I hope people can see uh, the flow of today. So we're just changing it because I'm going to not talk at all, but rather we're going to have a discussion around uh, the, the segments, the various issues around the NTTFC, whether the committee or its permanent secretariat, its membership, its scope and mandate. So I think first and foremost, uh, you know, what, the, what we will do now is uh, I will introduce who's on the table. And I will then introduce a topic. For example, we will start with the scope and mandate of the strict Sedition Committee. Uh, for those of you around the table, and especially those in the audience, I think that uh, I just want to clarify that my definition of trade Sedition, which has evolved over 34 years, is the following. I actually think for the students around, you know, who are listening in, that we call it the three plus one buckets approach. Uh, we look at uh, in terms of trading across borders, we are primarily concerned with behind the border issues. So tariffs do not matter here. We are looking at almost occasionally at the border issues. We look at procedures. We are look, talking about qualities and standard issues. We're talking about competitions such as, you know, trade policy issues, quantitative anti-dumping and so on. And then last but not least, which has always been a tickler in Pakistan, is, the, is around transport, the interoperability, the intra intermodal issues, regulation of vehicles and way, and so on, barring infrastructure. So I think Tafi Saab set a very good precedence by mentioning that, you know, the saying about infra, actually the problem with Pakistan has always been the software, which is the procedures, the way the government works, and how it uh, you know, works with trade across borders. So I think that to just kick it off, I think it's important to say that, you know, trade association bodies, by and large, um, uh, the, their scope and mandate has varied over time. But I think I would like today to posit uh, as a first round of questions to the folks on the table, uh, the following questions, which are, you can see on the screen. I hope everybody can. Uh, but I think before that, let me quickly introduce who I am going to be referring to on the table. Um, Aisha obviously is going to join later. We have Saeed Saab, we have Jawad Agha, uh, Tokisha Saab already you've uh, heard. Uh, Rashid Jan Muhammad is on the table. He's the chairman of, and you know, also the Pakistan Shippers Council. He deals in palm oil mostly. Uh, we have Tasneem Nurani Saab who joined around four. Irtaka Zedi Saab who is a long-standing uh, director who was the counterpart for the Trade Facilitation Committee. We have Abdullah Yusuf Saab, the once chairman FBR who really, if you look at how NTTFC performed during this tenor, it was uh, really outstanding. Uh, we have, I hope, um, uh, I think, uh, Ahmed Bilal Sufi, Rubina, I know is there. Babar Badat Saab, he's the former chairman of FIFA, currently the president of Fiata Global, again, a very uh, big luminary. We will also be having uh, Tariq Rangunwar Saab join us. So I think, and Dr. Manzoor, of course. So this is the table. I would now request that anybody from the table who wants to start. So maybe I will ask, um, I think start with uh, Dr. Manzoor Ahmed and then Babar Badat Saab, if we can talk a little bit about scope and mandate and uh, maybe focus on these questions that, you know, what should be the terms of reference? Uh, should NTTFC get into execution? Because remember, these trade situation bodies are usually simply uh, lobbying uh, uh, bodies, right? So this has been a problem that we saw in the old days. 
Um, should it strictly follow these issues? So let's have a chat about that. I think the floor over to Dr. Manzoor Ahmed. Dr. Saab. Uh, thank you very much, Amir. Uh, just one second, quick, quick second about uh, what Ambassador Tokirsha was saying. Unfortunately, there's a big disconnect what was happening in Geneva, where Pakistan was, you know, pushing everything and just uh, as Said said, and, but there was this other side in FBR in those days when the agreement was being, and they were just uh, pushing everything back. You know, they didn't want to, they didn't want to uh, implement uh, this uh, agreement. And then they were very, very conservative uh, about its implementation. And that program is still being followed. Uh, although, I mean, Wes uh, gave a good picture that we are, uh, you know, better than average. But if we look at uh, on the other side, uh, all the reform programs, which, uh, which, which, which would mean reform, we have pushed them to category C. That means we will own, uh, Dr. Nadeem Mulak always says, you know, we are addicted to this donor. But here it's really, really true. I mean, th these are Pakistanis, Dr. Saeed, who is uh, assisting 50 other countries and, and his other colleague uh, there. And, and all these guys who have all the expertise, but we are waiting for some technical assistance to come from, from, from anywhere. And we have pushed them for the next five years. Well, now, if I compare this with, say, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Mexico, any of the Gulf states, they have committed to do everything by themselves. There's no category C for them. They said, we'll do everything. Pakistan has pushed all the reforms. Actually, it constitutes about 27%, but actually, it's all of it. So, OK, OK, that was the introductory remark. Now, I go to your, um, your questions very quickly. The scope of resolution. Obviously, it will need, um, mostly it will be that, but it will need some amendment, I think, because of uh, some changing circumstances. Especially, I would like what the recent um, uh, World Bank and ITC report on non-tariff measures and what they have and how we address that. I think somehow that should be, that, that's a very focused report that has identified things and I should, it, it should be there. Now, second, uh, transport bucket. Personally, I'm in favor because the two things are, are, are connected that that should be. And now the third is uh, uh, whether they should be in execution. I, I don't think so. I mean, they, they, they have more advisory role, but what they can do is in the implementation side, they could, they could see and actually inform the, you know, the ministry and whatever, where we are um, uh, losing out or where we are delaying implementation. Now, the fourth question is, should we follow A, B, C issues? I think A is already implemented and about B and e, C issues, I think the committee should look because the time has changed after this post COVID. And also when these B and C were, most of these were uh, determined, that was the time when FBR and all the, you know, they were, they were not really in favor of anything. So uh, we'll have to, and they pushed everything back to nine, uh, 2022, 23, 24 even. So we, we will need to look at this. Um, I, I think this committee should look into it. Uh, what was the next question? Sorry, my, my screen is, okay. Should we say TF implies uh, both um, imports and exports? Yeah, sure. I mean, this this is, uh, you know, I, I think when it was discussed, it was always meant that both imports and exports uh, have to be facilitated through this uh, trade facilitation agreement. I, uh, I have some points, but maybe uh, I could uh, come later on for the time being that that's, that's, that's I think, enough for me. Yeah. I would like on uh, on the scope, Dr. Sir, I think you've uh, presented a very good introduction. The only reason we put number five there is because somehow when in, in the old days we used to go to Ministry of Commerce, uh, they're, they're just hung up about exports, not realizing that as part of the value chains, you know, the imports matter as much. So trade is all of trade, not just exports. So I think that's why we put it there. But thank you for that. I'm going to invite Babur Saab and then... You're the Sorry. sixth. Uh, I'm, you're I'll, the sixth. I'll come back to you, Dr. Uh, no, I thought about services, but okay, okay, later on. Yeah, no, I'm going to talk about services next. I mean, yeah, we also need to, in fact, uh, the sixth point is that, yeah, I don't know why it's not showing up, but the sixth point is very, very important. It's that because of the IT um, sector, and we'll talk about that. Maybe you want to have a quick comment on that, Dr. Oh, okay, uh, because I think the agreement was about goods and services somehow it doesn't fit in here. Maybe another forum or somewhere else, but here it doesn't fit in because that's about ports and about, you know, all those things. Uh, so I'll, I'll just stop here. 
Thank you very much. So I would like to invite Baba Sahib and then followed by Baba Sahib, uh, maybe Tariq Rangoon Wala Sahib, if that's okay. Baba, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Amir. Uh, thank you for putting this whole thing together. It's tremendous. It's very good. And it's good to see some that um, I've been connected with in the early years of NT. Uh, Dr. Saisa, I'm sorry, I hooked on a, a little late, so I missed some of your early um, comments in your in your opening remarks. Um, I mean, all these points are there, uh, you know, these things are there, but there's a fundamental, uh, fundamental understanding which uh, needs to be uh, brought to the fore. I think the problem is that there is a lack of understanding in government sectors and the functionaries over here on the importance of this particular thing. And the way NTT FC has been handled in the last few years, not few years, but several years. Um, I, I think as private sector, we are very disgruntled with the way the things were being handled. I must thank everybody who's been involved in this in earlier years and all the good that has happened at a certain point. But after that, um, you know, it's not been handled properly. Uh, the meat around, uh, a lot of issues were there, you know, operational issues within the entity FC. And I think uh, the whole organization and the effort has suffered because there is, a, there is for the, for in the government, clearly understand the dynamics of this whole uh, project and also to understand the priorities in this whole thing. It's extremely important without that, I don't think we are going anywhere. It, it is very, very difficult. At the same point, uh, at the same time, I would like to point out that, uh, you know, the biggest trade is the lack of logistics connectivity. So logistics continues to remain as the pivotal, the main point in trade for and we need to fix Barbara, I think your connection is pretty weak. Uh, we are losing you there. Maybe you should switch off your camera. Okay, Barbara, we still can't hear you. Maybe I'll come back to Babar Saab, um, I, you know, when he fixes his connection. Uh, can I just move on to Tariq Rangoonwala Saab? Tariq, are you there? Yeah, there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, can you, hear you well. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much, Amir, and uh, I really appreciate uh, I, the effort. Uh, hello, can you hear me, sir? I think I got a bad connection. Yeah. Babar, we, we have moved on. We're going to uh, give you your space next because you were not audible. So uh, after Tarek, you can continue. Thank you. So, um, Amir, I'm, I, first of all, I want to acknowledge... Uh, I was the, not uh, audible throughout or in the big, or just a bit? No, Babar, you are on a very, very weak connection. So I'm just letting in the interest of time, if you can stabilize your connection, okay. then I'll let you come in. Thank you. Over okay. to you, Tarek. Yeah, assalamu alaikum everybody and uh, thank you very much for uh, asking us to participate in this uh, or, or this matter of the FTTFC and I appreciate all the efforts you're making and the uh, ITC and all the stakeholders and the government of Pakistan and so many other participants. First of all, I would like to say that the FTTFC was uh, for us a breath of fresh air when it was first made in 2001 uh, when uh, Mr. Itika Zedi and uh, that time, Umtad and Will Keenan were there. If I may say something, you know, it was at least a beginning because at least all the stakeholders were present. I wouldn't say it was a lobby venue as such, although there were at times people were complaining against each other for whatever reasons that was there. But I actually say that the entity FC at that time did solve anomalies, you know, because it was an interministerial body. And if your issues were transparent, if they were clear, of course, you got the cooperation, and that's what it was all about, is sometimes you have an operational anomaly 
So whether it be the Department of Explosives in the Ministry of Industry, or whether it be the Customs, or whether it be something with the Port Authorities, or something with the Civil Aviation, this afforded us a platform in which to convey it and put it on record to the government. And this is what your objective is in trade facilitation, is, is to have all the uh, idaras basically uh, facilitate the movement of trade, and this is what we are very much in favor of, and we wish to support it as very as well as as we can and as, as ably as we can. Of course, we also look to the experience of Mr. Ertika Zidi. We feel your presence in Karachi is important because it's a hub, it's a major hub. We have many issues, and uh, you know we are in implementation of multi lateral dimensions. Some of them have been implemented already. Some are in the process of implementation. There's also the IT issues. There are security protocols. And, you know, <clears throat> there are security issues. So certain areas is not our call. So the eastern border is off the table because it is not on the table for whatever reasons that and those commitments stand uh, on as, as per the, the reasons why we got the accessions of the government. So we are not here for those fundamentals. We are here for operational reasons to get things moving and coordinated. And I'm, it, NTTFC has always been helpful whenever they had the meetings. But the problem was the meeting was very infrequent. Uh, you know, sometimes six months, there was no meeting, you know. So if I may request that if ITC does that, that it should be an always, you know, uh, operational body which should be available for access with an issue uh, at its secretariat level, wherever it is located. So when you do um, you know, strengthen this organization, that it, it, should, uh, it should not be a chamber because it's really a liaison between us as the stakeholders and uh, those who make policy. And we defer, and you know, I would also request that Mr. Irtika Zedi, because we work with him, you know, uh, we support him completely that, you know, he, since he was the architect in the early stages, and we, we, you know, we, he's the experience, and we've been experiencing it for 20 years. Uh, people like Mr. Badat and all were on the board. So, you know, we, we wish you all the success, and, and, and we, 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 you have our support. Uh, and uh, uh, if there's anything we can do to assist you in this, please don't hesitate to let us know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tariq Saab. That was very, very kind. I would like to ask, uh, you know, uh, both on the governance and how the, uh, you know, the entity FC structure can be improved. And I'd also like to tackle this, and if I can go back, maybe I'd like to invite first Javed Mansoor Saab, and uh, he's in Karachi. Uh, Javed's been, uh, I think, a long-standing secretary of the entity FC. Um, and I think that he has been very kind helping me uh, sort of restart this. So, uh, Javed Sir, if you can talk a little bit about what you think would be an ideal structure for the sort of improvement of NTDFC, uh, having heard what Ambassador Tokisab said very rightly at the beginning, that maybe housing it as a permanent secretariat within the Ministry of Commerce is a, probably a, a, a solution. So, over to you, Javed Sir. Uh, Mansoor, can you unmute Javed Sir, please? Sir, Javed Mansoor, sir, uh, sir, click on OK to unmute yourself, sir. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, Javed, sir, for the interest of some of the foreign participants, if we could stay in English on this. Thank you. OK, yes. Uh, uh, well, you see, I, as far as the uh, NTTFC's uh, structure is concerned, of course, the uh, from the WTO wing, has suggested that it should be located in WTO wing. Well, WTO wing will have a, a dominant role to play because the major aspects are this uh, related to trade facilitation agreement. But we have to realize that trade facilitation in the overall uh, scope covers many other things besides what is in the trade facilitation agreement. There are the major issues related to transport, there are other uh, things like the agriculture. Uh, for agricultural exports, I think you have to do a lot of things which are not covered under a trade facilitation agreement. And there are similarly uh, some other fields there would be. So we should not uh, be thinking in terms of a restrictive uh, function of a trade facilitation committee uh, in the context of trade facilitation agreement. As far as uh, structure is concerned, I think it will uh, achieve results best if there is 
equal uh, role in its functions of private sector as well as the public sector. All the public sector organizations, ministries, and other relevant organizations need to be represented on the uh, NTTFC. And similarly, all the private sector organizations from the trade bodies, transport bodies, and other related bodies, those need to be represented from all over the country. Uh, and uh, of course, that would make the uh, uh, membership very wide, but uh, uh, the work, basic work, I mean, that has to be decided, decided and then there would have to be some uh, working groups and subcommittees which would carry out the basic work and then which would be brought in, uh, before the NTTFC uh, for final decision and implementation. So that's the way it should work. And uh, you see, for the private sector to have some say, I feel that there has to be some uh, representation provided to them on the board. Uh, bo the, on the board of NTTFC, there should be equal representation of uh, public sector as well as private sector. And there, uh, the la uh, last time when we worked there, the, uh, there was a major grievance from uh, uh, private sector that meetings could not be held frequently because um, the ministries, of course, the, chair uh, the chairman, uh, Secretary or additional secretary were busy in Islamabad and they could not uh, visit uh, uh, Karachi for the meetings. And to overcome that, I mean, if there is a vice chairman or co chairman from private sector who could take over when the chairman is not able to attend, that would greatly facilitate the work. And so oh, I think this type of flexibility in the organization is very important that uh, needs to be introduced. Um, to get greater participation of the private sector, their ideas, they have many ideas of different uh, problems that they experience in their functions, and they, those can only be brought out by the private sector. That was in the, in the ministries, and uh, these do not uh, um, uh, stand out so easily. Uh, so, uh, I think these are the main points which I would like to highlight at present. If there's something else you would like. Uh, Sir, Amar, kindly unmute yourself, sir. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Sorry about that. Jal sir, thank you very much. Uh, before I move on to Irtaka Zaidi Saab, and we can, I want to talk a little bit about funding and working with donors, because I think this has been a tricky issue in the discussions that I've had prior to today's webinar. Um, so maybe, Abdullah Yusuf Saab, are you there? And uh, would you like to say a few words on this whole issue of where this committee should be, what its role is it going to be housed? It's better to be housed in uh, commerce, or uh, you know, where should the permanent secretariat lie? Uh, over to you, Abdullah Saab, if you are there. Ji, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum, ji. Uh, welcome and assalamu alaikum to everybody. Now, uh, the point that you have raised is basically about this committee, right? Yeah, right, the, the NTTFC committee. Remember, at one point, you were sort of heading the, uh, the NTTFC used to report to you during the National Trade Corridor Program. Hmm. So uh, now the thing is that uh, when we actually look at our overall position, we have this uh, huge trade deficit and it is very very critical one side we have the fiscal deficit but then this is the trade deficit that we are now referring to and this definitely requires a very very uh, constant and regular kind of effort and this committee is the body which can be actually used, I would say. Uh, it has to be, um, you know, uh, under the uh, administration of the Ministry of uh, Commerce. And what we need to see is that on our export side, what are those kind of steps that we have to be taking? so that we are able to actually increase our exports. 
one of the points I have is that, you know, when we look at our present exports, almost 60% of that is the textile sector. And there, we are actually not going for value addition, which will mean that if you are exporting something today at $1, you'll probably be able to add value to about, take it to about $10. So there is a big gap, I would say, and then, of course, there is the services sector, which again also has that uh, kind of potential. So all these type of efforts which are required, they have to be monitored through this committee, I would say, so that we are able to pursue it regularly. And of course, we have to involve uh, the uh, private sector and get the support from the government side. Uh, because uh, these type of problems that we are also facing on the export side, for instance, the border and, you know, the Afghan border, etc., was closed and it was not possible. These type of uh, issues are uh, affecting uh, our uh, uh, trading. So some of these things I think we need to now try to manage, I would say, uh, and, and focus on to achieve those uh, desired outcome, I would say. Okay. Thank you very there much, is, Professor. There is, sorry, there is also Excuse this, uh, you know, the import side. The import side we are having at the moment, you know, much higher than whatever uh, is uh, maybe likely if we are able to also see that what are those kind of uh, areas where it is not that necessary and you may be able to also curtail because when we look at the uh, taxation requirements the imports if you if they drop they reduce the taxes also which are to be collected on import side so that is another yeah kind of contradictory thing which uh, does prevail and uh, we have to now see that in the national interest what is the right way forward and we have to work uh, uh, and facilitate I would say this whole uh, matter. Thank you sir. Um, Thank you very much for a quick question. Yes sir. My quick question is, what role does research play in all of this? Because when we talk about facilitation and when we talk about trade, somehow I have the, uh, we always think that the private sector should sit with the Ministry of Commerce and decide what's happening. So private sector will say what they want to say, but research plays no role in any of this. Is that the way you're looking at it? Uh, may I just, uh, maybe for that particular question, I'll hand this over to uh, somebody, but no, research is very central. If you look at the slide that's on there, I'm actually, uh, you know, with the experience that I have, and I think maybe Rashid Jan Muhammad, are you there, Rashid sir? Uh, Mansoor, can you see if you can understand Rashid Jan Muhammad? So just for everyone's knowledge, I mean, I was born uh, with uh, Rashid Jan Muhammad into this with a gentleman called Haran Hansen, even before the NTTFC was set up. So Muhammad Suleiman Saab, uh, this is 1998. It's the first thing that was dumped on me when I came to Pakistan and joined the World Bank. And essentially, I think Rashid Jan Muhammad is better placed to answer how we've struggled to bring research, because essentially this body is about research. And that's the least of, of what it actually did. Because unless you do the research, you cannot convince, you cannot lobby, you cannot do anything. And we've always been waiting for Godot. And I think the uh, mention that I think Dr. Manzoor just made is very, very important. We have shifted everything into category C and we want assistance from donors to solve our own problems. Where again, quoting Sha Sha Saeed Saab, which was actually very true that the people around this table have more knowledge than all the 50 countries of the world put together on trade facilitation. So Rashid Sahib, over to you. Maybe you can answer a little bit about this and any other comments you have on the previous issues we had flashed on the slides. Thank you. Thank you, Amir Bhai. Thank you very much. And my compliments for this endeavor and the initiative you have taken. Uh, 
my relationship with NTTFC goes from the day one, as you know, 1998. Uh, myself and Javed Mansoor faced the music almost 15 years uh, from the private sector as well as from the government sector. Now, instead of going into the past, uh, I would uh, obviously research I would like to comment, but uh, referring to your earlier questions and the questions given in the emails and the thoughts given by other intellectual friends, I would like to say that, look, the role of trade facilitation and uh, reducing the cost of doing business has taken up so much uh, now that, you know, whatever, when we started in 1998, the awareness was not that great. And it was getting difficult to penetrate uh, in the government sector as well as in the private sector. But today, the significance of trade facilitation and reducing the cost of business is very much highlighted. And it's a very, very right opportune time that we carry on this subject and we try to formalize because, you know, the, with, with due respect to anybody who's listening here, the role of associations, the role of chambers and federation is not there who can help the private sector or who can help the trade and industry how to facilitate and how to do research. So my, my suggestion would be, Amir Bhai, that since you have taken this lead, number one, you need to create a proper ownership of whatever body you like to have, whether it call it an entity FC or whatever you like. Last time the mistake was made was, although you were involved in the very beginning when the World Bank did some funding and we in the private sector also did some funding and the Ministry of Commerce issued a notification. And by a notification, which was gazetted, they formed a committee. But that committee was just an advisory committee having no role where they could perhaps uh, play anything which could dictate anybody. And the legislations on which we worked for more than 12, 15 years, I think Javed Mansur Saab gave his life to his old legislation, all remain unattended in the assemblies. Except the success story of goods declaration, GD, and uh, I don't think we were, we were able to get any more success. And the model of NTTFC was not only recognized locally, but also globally. Secondly, I would suggest that you see that unless we do some sort of a legislation to the Trade Facilitation Committee, anybody who will come and who won't understand what we are doing, then he will like, uh, unfortunately, one of the secretaries of commerce, just uh, uh, by throw of pen, he just said NTTFC should be closed. The seed of closing was planted when they decided to shift the entity office from Karachi to Islamabad. And then uh, we know what happened. Coming back to the research, I think there is no other way without doing research is, is essential, is imperative. And there are so many areas where we can do research, which can minimize the paperwork, which can minimize the cost of doing business, only thing we will need to, I would say, uh, strong, make strong our secretariat. The secretariat, I, if you ask me personally, I would still like to keep it in Karachi. I know that Islamabad has got more power. Inter-ministerial coordination will be required. But you see, to have the control is very difficult sitting in Karachi. The feedback, the research-oriented things will be done in Karachi. But that is up to your uh, discretion. But my suggestion would be that we need to give a proper ownership of to NTTFC if we want to go ahead with the trade facilitation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Nadeem Saab, we'll pick up, pick up on this, but I want to move to Rubina Saiba uh, on, on two questions, please. The first is, Rubina Saiba, the whole issue on funding. I mean, we just heard that, you know, partly the reason we're having this webinar is because DFID has suddenly decided to be kind and give some money to ITC. And, you know, since we have shoved everything into category C, we are, we are undertaking this webinar. I'm a little bit apprehensive that maybe, you know, we need to come up with a different way. So until the realization, so number one, funding, how should donor TA be handled? Because I believe donor TA should only be for particular studies where partnerships are important. And related to my question is, uh, where should the permanent secretariat and how should it work? Because I really do believe that we need some think tanks. And I did not mention Pride simply because Pride has been kind enough to host this. But I really sincerely think that either a private sector or a government think tank 
in the capital should be at least bound with the permanent secretariat. So over to you, Rubina Sarva. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Durrani Sir. Um, I think I first really appreciate uh, the idea of this seminar and once again uh, revive that very important question of trade facilitation reforms. I think over the last few years we have actually lost um, thought of it. Uh, when NTDFC was there, there was some discussion, but after that, uh, obviously I haven't heard any such um, broad spectrum and comprehensive discussion in the last many years. Um, uh, before answering your question, I'll just uh, give a very brief two comments. I think the first is regarding this project. Um, and I think, uh, in a way, I'm glad that this project is here again. But unfortunately, as earlier uh, said by Toki, um, our experience with these projects is not very good. And we have seen that uh, these projects come and these projects go without creating any capacity uh, within these organizations um, to take it forward and to make it sustainable. Um, four years is definitely not an enough time uh, to create any impact. So if ever the donors are interested and if ever the government is interested, um, the project life should be a little longer. Uh, we have seen in case of NTTFC, uh, when, it is, when it was project funded, some initiatives were, were, were done, um, but they were not completed within, within the lifetime of that project. Um, so I think uh, whosoever is managing the funding and the, and the project, uh, it is a request to them uh, to, to consider uh, some longer duration. And I would also request the project management to please not focus on just reports and do something in the project life. Uh, secondly, regarding NTTFC, um, I fortunately had, um, uh, had the opportunity to work with NTTFC for some time when I was uh, additional secretary in Ministry of Commerce. And I have some, some insight um, into the working of NTTFC. I think what I personally think uh, the problem with NTTFC is, um, firstly, the role of NTTFC is not well defined. I think uh, Javed Mansur Saab would agree with that. And I think uh, some of the other speakers have mentioned uh, it's not very clear uh, what is the role of NTTFC, whether it's just a lobbying body, um, it's a policy-making body, it's an implementation body, uh, it's a monitoring body, so nobody's clear about it, that what actually the role of NTTFC is. So it's, it's important to have this clarification or this clarity first. I think then what I feel the failure of uh, NTTFC to make any impact, there are three main factors. First, of course, is the leadership. I, I would rather, I think I, I would credit Javed Mansur Saab when he was there. Um, he made a huge effort uh, to, to, to systemize some things and produce some good, uh, good things. But uh, NDTFC was not able to project itself to, to the higher levels of government. Um, secondly, of course, as you just mentioned, there is a big issue of funding. Whenever there are donor funded projects, there is funding, and when they end, there is no funding. I remember, and Javed Saab uh, would, uh, would bear me out, um, that when it was funded from EDF fund, um, there were many months when Javed Saab would write to me again and again, um, rent me the art and khani the, and I was not able to arrange finances for that. Third, of course, is the ownership. I think NTTFC right now, whether you, either you put its office in Islamabad or Karachi or Lahore or Peshawar or wherever, I think what matters is the ownership. Who owns NTTFC? Does Ministry of Commerce owns it? Does FBR owns it? And above that, I need 
it needs to be owned by at the higher level of government. Uh, we have seen, and it, this is our experience, just owning by even the ministry and FBR is not good enough. And I could show you the recent example of this export policy and the tariff policy that we have recently done. So unless there is ownership at the higher level, unless there is recognition, and I think I would say, unless there is priority, trade facilitation reforms, unless it is a priority by the government, um, whatever you do um, would, be, would be meaningless and would be useless. Um, funding, I think uh, you rightly pointed out, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big issue. And I think unless and until there is uh, one endowment fund or uh, some permanent um, uh, it can't survive in the long run. So I think that's what I would like to say, and maybe if there are other questions, I would like to ask. Thank you very much, Ravina Sahib. That was very, very succinct and very well put. I think the whole idea of uh, ownership is something that I myself am struggling with despite, you know, since 98. And I think while, just to give an anecdote, uh, when we have the committee on the trade corridor under Shock Aziz Saab, as the prime minister and we had about seven of the cabinet ministers uh, sitting there and people like Abdullah Yusuf being held accountable, the secretary of commerce being held accountable uh, at least once a quarter. Uh, that's really how some things moved because as I was reviewing what NTTFC mm -hmm. did, it was very important to understand that despite its, uh, uh, I call it uh, a bit of emasculation towards the end, but in the beginning, the approval of the goods declaration, the fact that today we are a signature TIR, you know, we even managed this in 2003. Uh, the president signed and then was withdrawn because of the India issue. So they have done, you know, all the carriage of goods by rail, by road, all the documents that are prepared. Uh, so there was a lot of movement. But I think let me talk about that issue of ownership. I used to call them the twins, uh, the counterpart to Javed Mansoor, maybe Itta Kazedi. If you would like to uh, come on the floor, it's Kasab. Over to you. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> Thank you, Hamid. Uh, actually, uh, I have been involved with the NTTFC and Ministry of Commerce for the last 15 years. Uh, in 1988, as uh, Rashid Jan mentioned, uh, the uh, working on the setting up of NTTFC started and uh, ultimately it was notified in 2001. Actually the issue or uh, main issue with NTTFC have been that uh, unfortunately the Ministry of Commerce could not provide it that importance or could not recognize the importance of the private sector that without the active particip participation of private sector, NTTFC will not work properly. Uh, when the NTTFC was at Karachi, all the meetings were held, most of them very successfully. Uh, a couple of meetings were held at Islamabad, uh, but they were flopped because uh, private sector could not participate. It's obvious that uh, private sector cannot uh, uh, spare time the whole day and then spend money and come to, are you, uh, 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 are you listening? Hello? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you very well. Thank you. Go ah, ahead. I see. So actually, uh, uh, this, uh, these meetings were failed and uh, there was a feeling from the private sector right from the beginning that uh, they have little say in NTTFC and the implementation of the decisions are not taken uh, uh, with more seriously. I'm not saying this because I'm not in, uh, in government these days. I mentioned this also when I was in Ministry of Commerce. Uh, look uh, how uh, strange it looks that the NTTFC was shifted, uh, the headquarter was shifted from Karachi to Islamabad without consulting, without talking to the private sector. And ultimately, the NTTFC were disbanded 
and then again it uh, was established again and the uh, private sector had no role no consultation in that uh, i agree with tariq london wala babur wada javed mansoor and rashid jan mohammed that until unless we give importance to uh, the implementation of the decisions entity fc will not be uh, successful as far as the funding is concerned i don't think it is a major issue because the uh, ministry of commerce is not that you know fund uh, star that it cannot provide some funding to ministry of commerce actually the thing is that the, the person who is heading this entity fc ministry of uh, secretary of ministry of commerce does not have time to chair the meetings therefore the it was agreed that meeting will be held after 3 months sometime the meeting was held after 6 months sometime after 7 months i at, at a number of time i gave suggestion that the private sector should be made co chair of the committee if secretary commerce is not available then the uh, person from private sector should chair the meeting of course the decisions taken by in that meeting will be endorsed by the ministry of commerce so therefore the due role of private sector is needed and as far as the board of directors is concerned uh, it should be uh, i think there should be a legal uh, uh, notification of that and uh, the board of director which was ex existing at that time it should be revived with some teeth in it in it and they should going to they should be able to implement their decision here i suggest that on the basis of uh, ethnic uh, like uh, ethnic like uh, executive committee of entity should, should also be formed which should be uh, a watchdog to monitor the activities of the ministry uh, of the entity fc and the decisions are monitored and implemented and this uh, executive committee can report to secretary directly without going uh, through the uh, whole board of director and whole entity fc and another issue is that uh, until unless we have participation of private sector in funding uh, the main purpose of establishing entity fc will fail because without uh, if, if 100% funding is provided by the ministry of commerce then we cannot call it a public private partnership therefore private sector should come forward and should bear at least 50% of the cost thank you very much thank you everyone sir sir that's been very very useful i think on that note um i really want to open the floor now to maybe three people first and then for closing i'll go back to dr manzoor and uh, ambassador tokir uh but before that maybe uh, babur saab uh, can you just uh, come in i would like after that jawad aqa and i believe zahid jamil one of the lawyers who worked with us in ntdfc and then maybe ahmed bilal sufi if you have can say a few words on really how to structure this committee but uh, before i give it to you babur saab do we really need to revive this ntdfc i mean is it going to be of any use let me be very provocative on this because if it's going to work like it was working towards the tether end of the last of this decade uh, i don't think we need it i think there are already other associations that can handle this let me let me just throw that out as a provocation thank you over to you hey, amir uh, uh, i'm sorry I, i'm traveling i'm out of stations having a problem with my connection um, um so i hope i'm uh, more audible now um can you hear me now yes we can hear you now thank you Okay. Okay. Um, well, I I I I was critical of the way um, the the NTTFC was running and what is the understanding um, uh, of the whole situation, and um, and explain that just uh, to to come to this um, position. But a a lot of the things have subsequently been mentioned by by others uh, colleagues on this, so I won't repeat them. But I will say that um, the work be uh, which was done. by javed was excellent and i think it got us a lot of traction and the leadership from abdullah yusuf saab and all i think it was very good 
And uh, Amir, I, I, I fully agree that the, um, the NTCP, uh, the, the National Trade Corridor Program was, was, was remarkable. We were able to do a, a lot of things over there. Uh, but the whole program had teeth, you know, and to answer your question now, if NTTFC is going to exist and work um, the way uh, it did in the last few years uh, before its closure, then I don't think there's much point in doing it. You have to, you have to actually shake the box and bring out a better product now. It has to be different. It has to be better. And it must have teeth to move forward. Uh, I don't know uh, how we can st structure it or restructure it, but there has to be a complete reset of the whole thing. So you should actually, the acronym should be the reset of Pakistan's trade facilitation. That's what you should, uh, that's what you should call it. And in this initiative, if you need to legalize the whole thing in a better manner, we should be able to do it. You know, this body. Uh, facets of commerce could exchange views um, uh, on, on a single level in the National Trade Corridor Program. So, and we were able to achieve a lot over there also. So I think, I think we need to go that way now. We need to, we need to, uh, to, to take a reset, complete reset and set it up and have a discussion on this. We can uh, you know, have a closer discussion on this, how we need to go forward. Whether you need to keep it in Islamabad or Karachi, or what's the role of the private sector? What would be the role of the government? All this has to be defined. Maybe in the next meeting, we can be more specific on this. Uh, Babur, thanks a lot for that. And for all the people listening in, Babur himself is a product of the uh, old NTTFC, wherein you know we went from having no representation on the freight counts in, uh, globally to Babur finally taking over the presidency. And I really wanted Bhavar to be congratulated because, you know, this meant a lot for Pakistan. I, and it has pretty much gone unnoticed by uh, ministries of commerce and FBR and all uh, to, to really hold. And remember, one of the reasons how we got Pakistan in and Bhavar in the running uh, for the various uh, posts was to actually show how Pakistan was moving on facilitating trade up until 2007. So, Baba, with pleasure um, having you here. I'm now going to hand it over to Jawad for a few minutes. And maybe, Jawad, you can give um, a very thorough customs perspective. Jawad and I have done a lot of work in the neighboring country as well. So, welcome back, Jawad. Over to you. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, a couple of comments um, in agreement with a lot that has been said so far. And I believe that this initiative right now, as we are all around the table, is indeed a commendable one from the point of view that at least it's a restart, a revival of uh, all the efforts that Irtika Zaidi Saab has been uh, convening those meetings and I have attended a lot of them with Javed Mansoor Saab and yourself and the rest of the team as well. Now the point is that uh, I would not really uh, say that the NTTFC didn't achieve much. It did. Of course, the ideal is a point of arrival where everyone would like to be. But things like uh, the goods declaration, the SAD, the uh, UNLK related uh, documents, whether they were for shipments or whatever, and a lot of other issues for the transport corridor that came about was a part, in part, an achievement of the NTTFC, albeit that its role was basically recommendatory and advisory and bringing people together. Here's where the issue regarding coordination, be it the public-private sector coordination or the donor coordination, and a lot is being said about the financing part of it. So for the financing part, I would tend to agree with Irtika Zaidi Saab on the subject that even the uh, Commerce Ministry can continue to uh, put in its effort and run the show. However, the TA components and time-to-time -time studies and efforts in adopting the best international practice are definitely required and would be a sort of ancillary for this committee in whichever shape it runs. Now, uh, when we were speaking about uh, its governance model, I'd like to say that there are different models being adopted in different countries. There's a model where there is a co-chair. There could be more than one co-chairs, whether from the private sector, be it the FPCCI or other, or it could also be from another ministry because there were issues that 
the private sector needs to have a share in it and that is a must because it's their issues that are primarily to be resolved and solved at these fora. So there's a concept of co-chairs and then there's a concept of certain countries are following subcommittees. So focused subcommittees for focused issues could then present their reports to the NTTFC and moving onwards as they bring their problems along with their suggested solutions and subcommittees could be handling those to bring them up. And then of course the uh, ownership, yes, very rightly pointed out that the ownership is a big issue, who owns it? But as long as, uh, like uh, Rubina, uh, ma'am, Rubina was saying that now that the ministry is owning it and if the ministry continues to own it in a stronger level, it would definitely be helping us in achieving way beyond. Now I'd like to uh, speak for a short while upon the issues that keep coming up are like the LCPOs being issued by, whether it's the phytosanitary certifications, the agricultural certifications in cross-border and international trade. The national single window here is going to attain or is at the focus or at the center of a lot of trade facilitation that is going to come about especially vis-a-vis -vis the port community system that is being uh, worked upon right now. And the National Single Window Act has also been cleared as well as its uh, governance structure and its steering committee, which would be running it in that manner. Likewise, I heard Dr. Manzoor was uh, uh, giving us an overview of the C category issues and a lot moved into the C category. Yes, partly so in agreement, however, I was watching a chart of a presentation made recently by the FBR and they showed that a lot of that would be achieved within the next two years. Having said that, I believe that if we um, continue in this fashion, like has been um, initiated today and Amir, your effort is also commendable. I would just like to close by adding one little point Dr. Nadeem mentioned about the research. So whenever there's an issue, you recall that we do have a training need or a need assessment. And at this level, if we include PIDE and PIDE's uh, forum could be utilized so that we could have a better support in that regard so that there is a repository for those need assessments and research papers that are put together in order to then adopt the best international practice in this realm. Thanks a lot. Anna. Thank you, Jawad. That was very kind. Now, uh, before I give uh, Zahid, are you there, uh, Zahid Jamil? Yes, G, I'm here. I'm here. Uh -huh. Zahid, welcome, welcome. So uh, let me, uh, Zahid, before I hand over to you, I mean, maybe you can say a few things about, you know, how to legally set this institution better on better footings, because you've had interactions with the NTTFC during Will Keenan's days. Um, my question actually is a little broader. I personally believe, as Jawad mentioned, that actually it's the private sector of Pakistan that not, does not want trade facilitated. I know Tariq's going to jump in his seat, but I'm going to tell you that I have actually been in the transport and uh, trucking sector for the last five years since I retired. And I can assure you that the terminals, the people, the terminal owners, whether it is SAPT, whether it's KICT, whether it's uh, anybody, and the merchants themselves and the owners of the goods do not want trade facilitated because they, under that absence of facilitation lies a whole veneer of, of malpractices that are going to be exposed. Simple thing, if I am able to issue a payment certificate when my container is released, uh, it takes three months to get the actual uh, certificate. We can do it in a click of a button. But the SAPT terminal people don't want their APIs exposed because they want those containers to be floundering around. They don't want those costs to be written down. So I think maybe uh, for that, uh, Zahid, maybe, I, I mean, I know it's a, not a question for you, but I, I want to get into that as a closing subject before we wrap up. And maybe I'll also invite Mohammed Anwar to talk about that. So over to you, Zahid, quickly, and then I'll switch to Anwar. Yeah, so I uh, thank you, Amir. First of all, thank you for having convened this. Uh, you as a, have, have been an old stalwart, maybe not of the entity FC, but the World Bank guys who put this together. So you were our donor. You were the man who made, you know, pushed the money and made things happen. And Will Keenan couldn't have done it without the World Bank and your support. So let's forget, remember that. I want to mention him and obviously your thing. I'm going to have a three-part response here. The first is, of course, Amir, mean, you are provocative. So I, I, I take your point that there are going to be interests that basically don't want some of these things to happen. But let's go back to the days when 
why Entity FC worked. It worked because a lot of the people wanted it to work. The same interests who didn't want some things to go through could have come to the table and said, no, we, we would like none of this trade facilitation to happen. We like the way that bribery takes place, maybe at some government departments, uh, at customs, et cetera. But what happened was that there was a leadership from the government also. I think that's the most important thing we need to think about. There was a seriousness from the government and problems that trade faced were being solved at this forum. So basically the attraction to come to the NTTFC was that the problems were being solved at this forum. And so there were policy reforms that would be implemented and you cannot do that without the participation and seriousness of the government. And so if we all recall, you know, uh, Mr. Taseem Nurani, who was, who was secretary and Madam Rubina, as she was throughout the, the process, we had tremendous success. So I, while we talk about the failure of Entity FC, let me speak a little bit about the success of Entity FC. In those early days, uh, there was a lot of success. A lot of the things were moving in the right direction. Uh, the projects were renewed. Uh, we were very excited about the reforms that we'd introduced and a lot of legislation was being worked on and very, to be honest, I mean, very seriously contentious legislation was able to successfully pass through the cabinet and, and end up in parliament. Uh, and I just wanted to remind everybody that let's not forget that the uh, International Carriage by Air Act is a product of Entity FC. And that was a reform that we implemented. It wasn't easy to get through. And Jawed Mansour Saab was, was key in that. Uh, and, and, and of course, you know, uh, the, the secretary, Thomas, as well as the government was extremely important to that. Now, let me just speak to uh, why this is important today, because we want to talk about relevance and what can we do to fix it, which is what I think you've asked me, Ahmed. This has never been more important. If it was important in 2001, it's even more important today. With e-commerce and the way the TFA and everything is moving, fulfillment businesses. We don't need the, the entity FC, which I believe was a 2.0 because it was a 1.0. We upgraded it, became 2.0, although it was still a, still a, a notification. I think we need a 5.0. We need to think about what's happened in tech, what's happened in the e-commerce. I need an, a really snazzed up, upgraded, and I couldn't agree with Badar Badat Saab more by saying Baba Saab is absolutely right that basically this requires a complete shakeup. Now, um, it was able to succeed legislatively. It was able to succeed regulatory to the point that the, that the government was able to seriously convene these meetings, have them in Karachi, as you've heard. So I don't even think it's a funding problem. Deferred and others in World Bank can provide the funding. The problem was release. The problem was making sure that the government actually did the things it was supposed to do. Now, what's the answer here? There was always an understanding that initially it would be a notification and subsequently we'd wor work up to a harder structure. Right? So as long as the notification remained and the government was serious, there were no problems. Things moved. But what happened was when we saw there was, you know, other uh, uh, things got more important and, and I won't go into details, but, you know, we saw a lack of sort of, you know, push by the government uh, as a whole. Uh, we then realized the structures are needed. So we need a, a, a statutory structure, maybe something much more serious, which would require obligations on the part of certain parties to do certain things to provide funding and the roles to be clear. So my answer, Amir, to, to this situation would be that you have the notification, that's fantastic. We need to now move to a harder structure, like we'd always planned, but that structure needs to look different, not in the sense that the, that the private sector needs to have a smaller role, or we ask the private sector necessary to fund necessarily, but what are the obligations? When do these meetings need to take place? If it's a, if it's, it has, it's a corporate responsibility, run it like a corporation. You have an obligation to have a meeting. You can't just say, well, I'm sorry, I can't travel to Karachi today. No, you've got to have these meetings. They run it like a corporation. Thank you. Hi, Zai, thanks a lot for that. I think that was very well and succinctly put. Uh, obviously a lawyer does that for a living, so we cannot expect anything <laughs> less from Zai. But thanks for reminding us about the Carriage of Goods by Air Act, because I think, yes, this has been an achievement. I just want to say a very cautionary word here about people thinking that the national single window is a replacement for NTTFC or basically a lot of trade facilitation will be done by the national single window. I have personally been uh, part of a project that created the one in Tunis, um, the trade, uh, which was called the Tunisia Trade Net. And I can tell you that often uh, it becomes uh, also a slave to the same kind of mediocrity and uh, process issues, um, and in many ways, these single windows often create parallel streams. But I have two people here on uh, who I'd like to uh, bring in very quickly. 
Uh, maybe as we're talking about single windows, uh, I'd like Mohammed Anwar, a fellow trucker, uh, to maybe say a few words on this. And then I'd like to invite Aftab Heather uh, for a few minutes because he's intricately involved in the NSW initiative. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Anwar. Thank you very much, Amir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, uh, what I see in Entity FC, the problem lies within the parties. Two parties in Entity FC. The one is the private sector and another one is the bureaucracy. Now the private sector is investing, is struggling, doing trade, making logistics infrastructure, investing in all kind of the uh, economic activities. And, and when there are tens of government officers who have to facilitate the trade at any point, either it is port or airport or border terminals, it is is the banking it is the so there is no accountability of any bureaucrat that they are fulfilling the their responsibility or not so this is a very major trade barrier so this kind of behavior within the country within the Entity FC, I have seen. I have attended many meetings of Entity FC as part of the uh, as, uh, representing the Lahore Chamber of Commerce. But whenever we have given any proposal or anything, there was no result. And if you see it in 20 years' existence of the Entity FC, how much we could achieve? Without Entity FC, we achieved TIR convention without any. TFC, we, we reach to TFA without, but these are all decision of the political level. Now the bureaucracy which is involved with the entity FC, their role is very, very uh, unjustifiable. I will say there is no accountability at all. So we have to uh, look some other kind of uh, uh, system which could be more viable to facilitate the trade. No, no, I think that's very, very aptly put. I think that brings us back to the same question. How do you, and I think Zahid Jamil mentioned that, you know, it's time to really make this accountable. Irtaka Zaidi Saab talked about that. But maybe Aftab, would you like to come in at this point and uh, give us a quick uh, two minute brief on your thought and, you know, just tell us what you were doing at the, the single window and how do you think NTTFC can be improved? Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Amir. I was actually enjoying my fanboy moment because there are so many big faces and big names that I can see around the table and it's an honor to be here. Thank you very much. Um, You've grown up now, Aftab. You're no longer AC <laughs> at You're an old man now. Yeah, that's a long, long time. Well, thank you very much, Amir. Um, just by way of introduction, I am very heavily engaged with um, the National Single Vendor Project, which has been renamed as the Pakistan Single Vendor Project and is being implemented under the leadership of Pakistan Customs, which is the designated lead agency um, appointed by the Office of the Prime Minister. Um, when I got invitation for the NTTFC meeting, you know, two or three things actually crossed my mind and I would actually go back to the experience that we have had with the National Single Window project so far that probably would um, help you think on the best way forward on how to go with the NTTFC. Um, like you said, the national single window is not actually the panacea for all ills. Uh, definitely, it creates parallel structures. It's very difficult for the organizations to uh, deviate from the traditional way of doing business, you know, go towards automation, go, go towards more accountability and transparency. So it's actually a big move that we're going to make another single window initiative. But there are three key takeaways that we have had so far. Number one, you need to have chain champions. You need to have owners uh, within the government department and also uh, within the private sector. The way we went out with NSW was that we did not immediately set out making plans, uh, creating documents, which nobody would read. What we did was we reached out to all the public and private sector organizations. 
we did a tour of all the chambers of commerce throughout Pakistan. We met to all the different associations. We made sure that we would be reaching out, answering their questions, um, you know, recording their reservations, their comments. We heard a lot of sentiments about how the national single window would just remain a dream. Um, and I'm happy to announce that Customs is actually looking towards uh, the launch of the first phase uh, of the national single window by June 2021. The second takeaway, in addition to having a chain champion um, and an organization that is going to claim the ownership for that, we needed to make sure that the ownership is not, does not remain uh, confined to the lead agency or to the donor, which in this case was the USAID, but also at the later stage, it became um, the IFC, uh, Asian Development Bank, and other donors. Remit also is going to have a part on the national single window. So what we did was to make sure that we package the product in a way that it is attractive to all the donors. It becomes a multi-donor collaborative effort. And you know, there are quick wins for everyone in it. So you kind of create an ownership um, in everybody. Third thing, what are we offering? We are not just offering an electronic portal because you know, that has already been done in customs. We walk is already there, which offers a, paper, a paperless end-to-end -end process. We are going for real reforms. So as part of the single vendor project, what we are doing is that we are going to each of the departments, which are about 75 in number, that control some aspect of cross-border trade. We look at their business processes, we map them, analyze them, and come up with policy interventions that they need to implement to make sure that their business processes are aligned with international best practice. As part of those efforts, the State Bank, for example, has agreed to eliminate the Form E and Form I. Uh, in terms of number, we are talking about 1.5 million documents that each trader had to apply uh, to the state bank uh, for making an import or export transaction. We are uh, ensuring that the pre-shipment inspection companies send the reports to an automated portal instead of sending it on a manual basis, which requires verifications and counter verifications from different departments. Your inspections and examinations at the border are going to be based on integrated risk management. The port management is going to be regulated through the port community system. So there are going to be B2B, B2G, G2G uh, interactions. So I could go on and on, but that is the third uh, takeaway for us. That you know, you bring a product, but you make sure that you are going for deeper reforms. You are just not creating a facade of reforms. And that brings me to NTTFC. I think one of the um, key achievement that NTTFC had, and I was, I think it was 2003 or four when the new format for the goods declaration was introduced. I think one of the reasons for its success was that customs owned that reform. And I remember as a very young officer, having to go through all those formats, having to respond to FBR on what would work for us at the borders at Durham and what would not. But in the end, we came up with this UN layout key and it is still being followed. Even though we are automating the, uh, the systems, we're still following the same structure. So I think for the NTDFC, probably we'll need to create a buy-in amongst all the stakeholders. I know their advisor has been me around this table and they have a wealth of information, but unfortunately the new generation of bureaucrats that is there, they need to understand um, what could be the benefits of having a body like NTDFC that which is the gap between the public and private sector. That's all, Amir, thank you. Thank you very much, Aftab. That was very, very good. And I think I want to, uh, before I close, and I think when I'll hand it back to Nadeem Saab, uh, who must be totally bored or listening to all these micro level issues. I mean, this is far below his, his uh, high level uh, uh, trade economics, but nevertheless, this is really the, the, the heart of trade, Nadeem Saab. So if, if, if we are able to say that. But I just went on internet while you guys, after I was talking because I had mentioned e-commerce, right? And we are one of the only countries, I mean, in the region where actually I said, okay, can I get this shoe? And if you type it, I challenge you, Amazon says, cannot guarantee delivery time. I do the same thing sitting in Dubai. They will say it will be at my house on day so at this hour. You know, that's how good logistics is globally. And I think with this um, the e-commerce economy and stuff, which is, by the way, you know, internal trade is as important um, uh, to, to bring into this topic on trade situation. But... You know, that's a story for a longer time. May I just invite now, uh, maybe anybody who would like to say something before I close this with the two people, maybe a closing statement from uh, Manzoor Saab and Takir Saab. Anybody else? I don't see any show of hands, so I'm going to, in the interest of time, because we have only 10 minutes left, 
So uh, maybe Dr. Manzusa, maybe you, and then, okay, Babur, you want to say something before? Okay. Yeah, yeah oh, very quickly, understand. very quickly, um, uh, logistics, logistics, and logistics. You've got to take care of this, otherwise you cannot have trade facilitation. You've got to fix up the infrastructure and the facilitation. That's it. Thank you, Bauer. Um, uh, okay, Dr. Sir, Dr. Manzoor, and then followed by Tokir Saab, and then I'll hand it over to Nadeem Saab. Thank you, Amir. My impression of this meeting, a very good meeting overall. You know, uh, but it was, it touched on every point, but I think you'll need a little more focused meeting because many issues, uh, I think people pointed out and you, you'll need to be, uh, and, uh, okay, let me um, just highlight those issues. One, Babur Bedat and other people said about resetting this NTFCC, and that will need to be done. So, so, so you'll have to focus on how it's going to be funded, where the headquarters, how it should be chaired, and, and all those things. And uh, I think uh, you were mentioning about this e-commerce. Although Pakistan is is in a terrible shape, but you know, in the last one year that they approved this uh, e-commerce policy. And uh, with Tokir pushing from Geneva, a lot of his effort, and and this is this is going doing very well. I mean, they have a overall council, but then they have a WhatsApp group where everyone, State Bank, FBI, everybody, private sector, everyone is represented, and every day they are discussing these issues and trying to come up with solutions. I think that's a very good uh, role model, and, and and need to look into it. Now, about um, uh, research. I think there are some articles inbuilt in this um, uh, agreement. For example, time release study, for example, these other things, which you know, any university, because they'll be neutral, they can do how long it takes for the goods to be released. You gave a very good example of this uh, Amazon, you know, this thing. And, uh, and one other point you're making that is, is uh, various private sector not interested in one, it's the same thing with, with, with all the government agencies. We were the, amongst the first country in 97, because I was the coordinating officer then, started automation. Every five years, seven years down the line, we get somewhere, somebody says, no, no, let's go on to another system. And now we are far behind any other country. So, so, but the real test will come, I think, when the single window comes in. Uh, you know, it's very uh, nice to hear Aftab Heather explain it. But I think that will be all the things combining together. I think I'll stop here to give some more time to Tokil because he's more up to date on the Yeah, but before Tokil, sir, you said I have two hands. If you can just allow them to pitch in and then for a closing to Tokil, sir. Um, Jabbar Saab and Zahid, they want to say something. So can we unmute Jabbar Saab? And also, uh, Mansoor, can you see Jabbar Saab? He has his hand raised. So can I speak? Yes, please, quickly. Thank you. Over yeah, to you. Thank you. I think uh, this quickly has really made me conscious of how to speak. But anyway, let me be uh, with the speed, but not out of the sense. You see, first of all, I think uh, I'm also history with the NTTFC and I have sent uh, enough comments against your questionnaire and all the structured framework. So at least I can claim that 50% is saleable and 50% may not be saleable, but considerable. And you must uh, look into that. But let me now retreat. Okay, when NTTFC was mad, I was always in all the meetings for asking the ministry that uh, this body in regard of place burden in terms of TOR, development of implementation policies in respect of WTO agreement, yeah, UNESCO framework, it needs uh, some statutory role. And without any statutory role or burden on any stakeholder in the public sector, the implementation may not be possible and they would be just uh, regarded undiluted, I may say, and or diluted, it depends on the person who is attending that. So I was always making advocacy that either this, uh, I may say, institute should be made as a public company in terms of section 42, because various questions have been raised, how many meetings, performance, accountability, how come that thing was not done and why not it was put to the monitoring and all these issues, probably, I'm saying they have a probable solution if uh, it is in the form of a company. 
then all the best practices of code of corporate governance and all the issues in respect of conduct of uh, members in respect of conduct of any gm for example we were talking about uh, including more people that could be a, like a general body and the directors could be at the as the board of directors so both can work together now having said so uh, said so i think about the about the money i always fail to understand that edf is not a money which belongs to for example government of pakistan edf is just collected on account of exports so edf was always our money but money was never a problem because in case if we would have integrated i mean say national chamber if you would have integrated the provincial headquarter chambers i have seen their financial statements they are very good and let me also remind you that when i was vice president back in the federation of pakistan chamber of commerce i myself gave 10 million rupees to institute of code of corporate governance so that was the money available 20 years back then again to the wto that epb at that time asked for us to contribute 100000 and we were able to do so so i don't think that uh, we can we have to look for from here and there for graceful donations i think we are already quite uh, i mean say self sufficient to sort of contribute the only thing is that the oceans uh, uh, drops make ocean probably that is a solution but let me now stop here by requesting you that uh, please circulate my comments and i have prepared with abundant portion that should suffice to answer your all questions and your all apprehensions and your all raised points and lastly let me thank uh, rashid jan mohammed who in fact with me started a journey from uh, shippers council and that was the idea which was floated on card was there so i would say that everybody worked hard but then implementation yes remained a issue because it did not have any statutory role any burden of legislative sort of situation where and recommendation would become a statutory obligation for others to yeah. take it seriously thank you very much vibhav sir thank you very much and you know i could not see you so i was remiss and you know, sort of i missed you apologies for that thank you for those very very uh, concrete comments and yes we will circulate now in the interest of time zaid you get 30 seconds and then toki yep. sir and then nadeem we we have about 7 minutes to... left <laughs> I used to see you when you were very young. <laughs> yeah, don't don't remind me. It's a lot me. more hard now. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank the, you, Vibhav. I, I would agree with you. Uh, very quickly, I would say number one, section forty-two is a good, a good, good uh, answer to the to the to the structure problem. It would require governance and require people to come on to a meeting. It would people won't just delay things. But I also think that there needs to be some structure within government that forces. Uh, a certain sense of seriousness with regard to an entity of that nature so i completely agree all i wanted to say was uh, today after 2001 today entity fc used to be about logistics and customs today it's about more e and i'll explain why when when initially i was called in and javed asab and everybody else knows this when i was called in i was asked to do the electronic part of it look at the e part of it can we have electronic bills of lading electronic airway bills etc instead it became much bigger and we looked at all the legislation at that time e was a component it was an add on today e is the main thing it is everything and logistics is a part of it to some extent uh, and, and and so that is why a reset a complete rehash and let's not forget you know actual physical delivery and logistics is an extremely important part but we have to look at it in the e context yeah. that's all i'd like to say thank thanks, you thanks right. thanks a lot and i think everybody at least agrees that we're going to call this initiative not remit but reset pakistan's trade facilitation i think there have been getting suggestions throughout and mohammed said sir you better listen to this uh can i just have uh, uh, tokir saab say a few words uh, uh, just a minute or two to to sort of uh, sum this up thank you dr anish saab just just to recap a few things um uh, when the tfa was created it created institutional arrangement and tf committee the national committee was an integral part of that and it says every member shall establish and maintain which means it's a international law obligation of the government of pakistan so and secondly another institution which we did not find any mention is the committee in the wto 
I'm a very strong advocate of the, this, that every year Pakistan must send a private public delegation to this uh, TF committee in WTO. It's a huge forum. It's an excellent forum of learning from other countries, experience sharing, and I would strongly advocate that every year a private public delegation goes to the WTO Trade Facilitation Committee to share what we are doing and to learn from them. Uh, I'll just end by one thing. Dr. Nibul Aksab raised a very apt question about research and research feeding into the National Facilitation Committee. Lots of my view is that in government, only that thing gets delivered which can be measured. And it is for the researchers to measure that what is getting delivered. The ultimate outcome of all this effort is that how much money and time the efforts of the people on the Trade Facilitation Committee is going to save. And that is going to be measured by institutions like PIED, like LAMS, or other research bodies. So I would strongly advocate that we must have leading uh, research bodies on the TF committee. You see, the agenda for research is huge. Doctors have mentioned the trade, uh, the time release studies of the containers or how goods are released at the ports, import, export, both. Gender and TF is a huge issue. SMEs and TM, port efficiency, national single window global experience, and then one thing mentioned, the certification of trade that Dr. Manzoor mentioned. This is a very important subject. And then uh, thanks for, to Zaid Jabil Saab for mentioning the fourth industrial revolution with e-trade and digital uh, trade. In fact, in international Geneva, work is already happening on TF 4.0. So uh, these are a huge uh, research agenda, which is unattended. So thank you, Dr. Saab, for pointing out on this. Finally, uh, a parting thought, a one-day delay, according to the World Bank, in container clearance reduces your export by 1%. And this global value chain will remain a pipe dream until and unless we have a real implementation of TFA. Thank you. Okay, sir, thank you very much. Um, and before I hand it over, maybe Said Saab would to say something and then Nadeem. Uh, just to all the donors who are around the table right now, that I am now in the private sector. So in that public-private group to Geneva, please keep a ticket for me. Uh, Nadim does not qualify because he's actually a public servant right now. So maybe, Saeed Saab, you can say a few things, and then Nadim Saab, I'll stop. You just close. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Amar. Very briefly, let me share you first that I'm absolutely pleased, and as expected, this was the richest discussion on this subject, which I have witnessed, despite having extensive experience in terms of time as well as in the geography. I can promise you being the uh, lead or the head of this uh, DFID funded remit project, that for the next four years, the second step in this area after this would be to come up with the recommendation. And I can assure that we will address each and every point which you have mentioned. I don't promise that it will be finally included in the recommendation because we will have another round coming back to you that this is what we think you told us. And this is again for you to consider and advise. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nadeem Saab, over to you, close. We'll, as mentioned by Saeed, we will have a validation meeting as soon as we have a recommendations report ready. So Nadeem Saab, over to you. Thank you, Amir. I think it's uh, been a great discussion. I've learned a lot. Don't think I was not interested. I'm certainly interested, interested in learning anything I can. But let me just make two or three points that I think I find very important. I think we look at things in silos. Trade facilitation um, is viewed in the donor terms in a, as a silo, that perhaps we can facilitate trade while domestic trade is horrible. 15 years ago, I advised the Ministry of Commerce to look at domestic trade and they still have not. The Ministry of Commerce does not know. That's a fact. Ministry of Commerce doesn't have a mission statement. It doesn't know what it does. Is it looking after exports? Is it looking after imports? Is it looking after commerce? And nobody has yet been able to answer that. They have nothing to say about domestic commerce. Domestic commerce sucks. Very simple. Now, are you going to facilitate trade while domestic commerce sucks? Let me give you some examples. Jabbar Sab just mentioned Pakistan Institute of Corporate Governors. 
I've been sending them email for the last two months, asking them what can I learn from them? How can I cooperate with them in learning about corporate governance? That body does not want to answer. That shows you how much we develop things, even though we create bodies. Second thing, you talk about Amazon. Look at the Raz.pk. I have worked with the Raz.pk in the sense I bought things from them, like I bought things from Amazon. Amazon stands by its sellers. The Raz does not. I just once on Twitter mentioned I got bad service from the Raz. There were 500 complaints from everybody that the Raz is serving people badly. I've invited the Raz and Zameen.com to come and help us think this through, come on webinars, they don't want to. Babar Bedat mentioned logistics. I've invited Devu, Niazi, and all the logistics people, come and tell us about logistics. No, they want to advise the government to give them concessions, am I wrong? Or do they want to learn? If they want to learn and help us learn, we are with them. I want students to do theses on logistics. Will they allow us to do it? Why is there no logistics market in Pakistan? Why should government be facilitating logistics? I think these are also questions that I'd like you to take up in the next webinar. And now, final comment. It's also very interesting that the latest e-commerce people, I just got a note yesterday from someone. I won't name the company for obvious reasons. The latest e-commerce people are busy asking for protection from the government, saying, hey, kill Facebook, kill Amazon, kill everything, let local governments come in, let local companies come in, like kill WhatsApp and we'll have a local WhatsApp. I don't know, is that a step in the right direction or the wrong direction? So even though I agree with you fully on trade facilitation, but trade facilitation not in, outside, it's also inside. Huh, another thing, I like to do a lot of my investigation as uh, Toki Sub said, measure. So I do something to measure myself. For example, I just thought I'd check out how to buy a computer in Pakistan. So I went to the website. I searched for computer firms in Lahore. Here is the data. I called seven of them just now. None of them are interested in answering. I went to the chambers of commerce in Pakistan. They say, okay, if you're going to help us do something with the government, we'll work with you. Not to learn. I think we have to change our attitude, our culture. Trade is not about getting your own goodies. Trade is about facilitating the pie. And if we don't do that, and it's just about getting our own SROs, then I'm afraid we'll fail again. That's my last words. Amir, thank you very much. If you have any last words, otherwise we close it down. Thank you. No, no, Amir, sir, thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much for, uh, for hosting this. And I want to thank uh, Saeed Saab to the green that we hosted here. As you can see, Saeed Saab, this was a very, uh, I think, a rich gathering, a very eminent gathering and very rich discussion. And I think just to pick up on uh, what Nadeem Saab has said, remember, Tawkir Saab, global value chains only work as good as your internal trading works. So I think this is something that I have struggled with in my, you know, since 98 in the World Bank, in ITC, in Ankhtar, uh, that, you know, we somehow need to understand that, you know, you can facilitate across the border, behind the border, but if the entire chain is not facilitated, we did a lot of work on this during Will Keenan's time, uh, I hope that in the coming days, when we resuscitate NTTFC, we will say more about it. But to thank everybody, and I would like to say bye bye. And uh, thank before you. Before we close, Amir, my request before we close, Babur Sahib, can we have a webinar on logistics? Can we understand what's wrong with logistics and transport in Pakistan? Is it some government policy, or is it the fact that you guys can't make an industry? I'd like to invite similar discussions on retail, on real estate, for example, real estate. I just Excellent. talked to a few real estate brokers today. Can you work with me? Anybody wants to. Can we go buy a property in Samnabad? I can go and pro buy a property in York or in bloody Kalam Kalamazoo County, but I can't buy a property in Samnabad because the market's so disorganized. It'll take me three months to buy a property. If you have that kind of a market, I'm sorry, you can't go overseas. So I would invite all of you, help me do a, 
a, web, a few webinars on these markets so that you can try and understand these markets and get my kids to start doing thesis on these markets. That's where what Takir Saab is saying, measurement will begin if he gets students to start working on that. Thank you, folks. Admire, Amir, what you've done. Let's set up these new discussions. Okay, Amir? Thank you.